can we synthesize training data for a new generation of AI medics? So that was the challenge they were given, and I'd like to invite them up on stage to present their work. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to share with you some preliminary results that we've done on the future of astronaut health, enabled with artificial intelligence and machine learning. My name is Kritika De Silva, and myself and my colleague Brian Wang will be doing the presentation today. And although it's the two of us up here, we're a team of four core researchers with expertise in regenerative medicine, biomedical engineering, and computer science. We're fortunate to be supported by mentors from NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, IBM, and NVIDIA. The future of space exploration is exciting. We're going back to the moon. And as we move from manned missions to the ISS to deeper interplanetary travel to the moon, Mars, and beyond, our astronauts are being exposed for longer periods of time to radiation, and microgravity. If we want to enable this to happen, we need to prioritize the health of our astronauts. So if we want humans, and not just rovers, to reach deep space, we need to expand our capabilities with artificial intelligence, we need to prioritize the health of our astronauts, and we need to enable autonomy in space. We heard Dr. Tu tell us about as we get further from Earth, the amount of time it takes to communicate increases. This is especially important in healthcare. So we need to enable autonomous healthcare in space. That's the focus of this project. It's the first step in enabling autonomous healthcare for astronauts in space. So there's numerous health risks associated with space. Among others, there's cancer, vision impairment, and muscle atrophy. The heart, in particular, undergoes not only atrophy, but also an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, such as atrial fibrillation. In the same way that we're continuously monitoring the engines of our spacecrafts, shouldn't we also be continuously monitoring the health of our astronauts? Enabling autonomous healthcare in space is imperative. So, NASA and the Canadian Space Agency are utilizing wearable devices to, conti to collect continuous data of the biosignals of astronauts. They're using a wearable smart suit called an AstroSkin that has numerous sensors throughout, that, including a three-lead electrocardiogram, an ECG. And an ECG measures the electrical activity of a heart. So data from this wearable device, in conjunction with techniques such as machine learning, can enable us to build monitoring of the health of astronauts, but also early diagnostic tools in the future. But first, before we build any sort of trained AI doctor, we need data. Data is the most valuable commodity of the 21st century. But currently, there doesn't exist any symptomatic wearable data from astronauts. And we've produced just this. Before I dive into the specifics of the work, I'll give a quick overview of what an ECG outputs, because it's important when we show the output of our model. So on our left is a healthy ECG signal, and the important characteristics are the P, the QRS, and the T wave. And on the right is a signal with atrial fibrillation. And the points to note, there's many characteristics of atrial fibrillation, but the two of interest to us are the lack of the P and the T wave. The two main data sets for this project are wearable ECG data from astronauts on an analog mission, as well as clinical data that's symptomatic of atrial fibrillation. So an analog mission is a simulation of the types of activities and experiments astronauts would do, but, it's held, but instead of being in space, it's held here on Earth, and it's held in a confined and controlled setting. So we had astronauts wear the, the wearable ECG, as they were carrying out their different activities, sitting, standing, walking, doing experiments. And this data is valuable for us because it gives us an indication of the sort of noise that we would expect 
when using a wearable device like this. So these are the two main types of data that we take as inputs into our model. On the left, we have what we call the style that we want to produce. And this is the style of an ECG from a wearable device. And on the right, we have the content that we also want to produce. For us, the content is the symptom that we're working to generate. I'll pass it over now to Brian, who'll talk about a little bit about the data and the architecture of our model to build this. Thank you, Kurtika. So, as she mentioned, uh, an ECG signal can be broken down into two components. One is the style, which is how the signal looks as it was obtained from an AstroSkin wearable. And the second is the content, which is the morphological pattern that characterizes the symptoms of a signal. So, when we extract the style and content, we first train two discriminators. The first is trained to determine whether or not an incoming signal is astroskin or not, and the second learns to determine what the symptoms are. We then train two encoders, which using these two discriminators inform what the style and the content are. And then we decide to concatenate the style and the content features, and that is fed into the generator here. The purpose of the generator is to fuse AstroSkin style with symptomatic characteristics. And the resulting signal is a, a mixed morphology of both the style and the content from the incoming signals. So for our project, we decided to focus on synthesizing AstroSkin data with atrial fibrillation, which is one of the many conditions that an astronaut may experience but there does not exist real symptomatic AstroSkin data. And why is that? The reason is because there does not exist any cases of astronauts having atrial fibrillation in space. So we have a problem here, and that is, how do we evaluate our AI-synthesized AstroSkin symptomatic signals when we don't have a real signal to compare to? Here's our approach. So, when we decide to validate on a signal that doesn't exist, instead we can choose to focus on the classes of data that we do exist, that is the AstroSkin asymptomatic and clinical symptomatic data. And then in addition, we can perform visual validation. That is, we can check if the synthesized signal has the qualities or characteristics of AstroSkin style, but also the symptomatic characteristics. So here's an example that we have here of our synthesized signal that you can see on the bottom. Notice that these red arrows are pointing to the symptomatic characteristics of atrial fibrillation, as Kritika mentioned earlier. Notice that our synthesized signal has these same characteristics, but also has a similarity to the original AstroSkin asymptomatic signal. In addition, we will send these results to be peer-reviewed by expert cardiologists at Mayo Clinic. Here's a visualization of the different clusters of data that we have using T-distributed stochastic neighbor embeddings, or TISNI for short. TISNI at a high level is a nonlinear dimensionality reduction technique that allows us to cluster different classes of data. And what we have shown here is our AstroSkin asymptomatic, shown in red, our clinical symptomatic, shown in black, and our synthesized signal is shown in blue here. Notice that it's in the middle of both of these clusters, which is what we would expect because it is essentially a hybrid of the previous two classes. We find that our results are promising, and we believe that our model is the first steps to generating a, uh, a system for autonomous healthcare monitoring for astronauts in space. So when we choose to send astronauts into space, we are selecting the best and brightest pioneers and explorers who are tasked with complex and dangerous activities such as the spacewalk that you see here. But long-term space expeditions will not be possible without autonomous, real-time monitoring to ensure the safety of our astronauts. And we believe that our model has tackled the first steps to providing such a system. But that is not all. As Kritika mentioned, one of the most important commodities of the 21st century is data. 
And our model for synthesizing biosignals can be used to inform clinical AI decision support systems. And that has a lot of applications here on Earth. Imagine if you had such a system, then would it ease the burden of care on our doctors? Would it allow them to make more informed decisions? And more importantly, would it provide remote and impoverished communities with the ability to have access to clinical diagnoses? So whether it be in space or here on Earth, human health is important. And we hope that as scientists, engineers, and business leaders look to the future, we can continue to improve on systems for AI-informed um, decisions in healthcare, not only for the astronauts that are venturing into space, but for the ones who will remain here, and for the ones who need it the most. Let's make it happen, together. <laughs>